Good morning. Please open your packets to day 14 and we can get started. Okay, hey, today we'll be interpreting graphs. So there are a lot of different types of graphs and we're mainly gonna concentrate on two graphs today, one being a bar graph and the other one being a line plot. So I'll read the first one, which is an I do, and I'll give you a chance to work as I can do it. The first problem reads, Sasha's class is collecting cans for a recycling project. The graph below shows how many cans were collected each week. How many more cans were collected in weeks three and four combined than in weeks one and two combined, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to circle our big question. And it is down below. How many more cans were collected in week three and four combined then in weeks one and two combined. Now, notice that I see that word combined twice. And I know that combined means that I'm putting something together. And in math, when I put things together, then that means we add those things. So in addition to underlining our big question, let's box in the word combined because we see that twice here. So let's box it in over here as well. And again, we know combine means two. We're going to add something. Okay. We also know that we're only going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at weeks three and four combined. And we're also going to be looking at weeks one and two combined. Okay. Now let's take a look at our graph. We know that an, our graph always has a title and it always has labels. So the title of this particular bar graph is Can Collection. It is a bar graph that shows a title of number, I'm sorry, a label of number of cans collected on this side. So here, our number of cans collected, our number line is in increments of two. Because if I start here, that's two. The next line is four, then six, then eight. And when I get here, that line would be 10. Above 10 is 12, 14, 16, 18, and then there's 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and then 40. So I know they're in increments of two, and this represents the number of cans collected. On this side of the graph, the bar graph, I have my weeks listed. Here I have week one, week two, week three, and week four. The first thing I must do is figure out how many cans were collected in week one. Well, I see my line is just a little bit above 10. And remember, they're in increments of two. So the next notch above 10 would be 12. So week one, I know, would be 12. So let's put a 12 there. So week one is 12. Then we do the same thing for week two. We go over to week two. It is above 10, it is definitely above 12, but it's not at 20. But let's see where week two is. So week two is at right here. So that would be 10, 12, 14, 16. So week two would be 16. So let's label it 16. Okay, now let's go to week three. Week three is above 20, but it's below 30. So week three is about right here. So 20 is here, 22, and then 24. So week three 
would be 24. So let's label it 24. And then finally, we get to week four. Week four is right on the line of 30. So week four would be 30. Okay, so now we know how much was collected each week. Let's go back to our big question. We know it has how many more? And we know how many more means that there's going to be some subtraction. So let's box that in. So how many more means to subtract, okay? So how many more cans were collected in week three and four combined? So remember, we got to do some adding because of that word combined. Then weeks one and two, which tells me weeks three and four number has to be higher when I combine it than weeks one and two, okay? So let's start. Week one. was 12, and week two was 16. And remember, I have to combine those, 12 plus 16. 12 plus 16 gives me a total of 28 cans. So 28 cans for week one and two. Now let's do three and four. Week three was 24, and week four is 30. And again, I have to combine that. So when I combine the two, I get 54. So 54 for three and four, because remember over here it says, how many more were collected weeks three and four than one and two. So again, that confirms that this number here for week four should be higher. I'm sorry, the week, the number 54 should be higher than the number 28 here. So now the next last thing it says is how many more, how many more tells me I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to take my 54 and I'm going to subtract 28 from it. Let's regroup because I cannot take 8 from 4. So I had to regroup my 5 to a 4. And now my 4 in the 1's place is 14. Remember, we always start in the 1's place to subtract. So 14 minus 8 gives me 6. And then 4 minus 2 gives me Two, go back to my big question. How many more cans were collected in weeks three and four combined than in one and two combined? Here we combine them. And then it said how many more we subtract them. So our answer is C. So we should circle C. And I'll pause for a moment and let you get that. If you need additional time, just pause your video. <clears throat> okay, let's go to your next question. Here are your answers again if you need to see them again. Okay, your next question is we do. And remember I said we will be working on graphs today. And this is one you probably haven't seen. This particular graph is called a line plot. And I'll explain how we read that line plot in just one second. Our question reads, the line part be plot below shows the number of marshmallows Mike collected in each of 20 packages of marshmallows. What is the least number of marshmallows Michael collected in any one box? Okay, so we're going to circle, I'm sorry, underline our big question. <clears throat> okay, least has been capitalized. 
So you know that's important. And I know least means the smallest. So I'm looking for the smallest number. Okay. <clears throat> so remember, this is a line plot, and this line plot shows the number of marshmallows, and he had 20 packages. Well, each X represents a package. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So all 20 packages of the, of the marshmallows are on this line plot. The numbers 40 through 60 represent the number of marshmallows in each bag. So in this particular bag, there was one bag and it sits on, this is 40, 41, 42. So one bag had 42 marshmallows. 43, 44, two bags each had 44 marshmallows inside. 45, 46, one bag had 46 marshmallows inside. 47, 48, one, two, three bags had 48 marshmallows inside. 50, one, two, three, and five bags had 50 marshmallows each inside the bags. Then I go 51, 52, one bag had 52 marshmallows. Two bags here had 54. One bag had 56. One bag had 57. Two bags had 59. And one bag had 60, okay? So that's how I read a line plot. Each X on this particular problem stands for a package of marshmallows. So X stands for the package of marshmallows. And you know what? When you are doing a picture graph, you have a key. So X stands for the packages. Okay. Now. Your big question says, what is the least number of marshmallows Michael counted in one box? It should say package. I don't know why it says box. Here, I go to the here. I have one here. I have one bag here. And I have an X on 42. I have one bag here. I have an X on 46. One X, remember, because I'm looking for the least. I have one X on 52. I have one X on 56. I have one X on 57. And I have one X on 60. Okay. It says, what is the least number of marshmallows Michael counted in any one box? The smallest number of all of these would be the number 40. Two. So my answer right here, because it is the least, which means it is the smallest. So my answer for this particular problem would be 42. And basically, it's just trying to see if you know how to read a line fly. So your answer for that is 42. So I'll pause and let you catch up. <clears throat> if you need additional time, just pause your video. All 
All right, our next problem is a we do. And notice that it's a bar graph as well. So let's read what it says. It says, the city zoo officials kept a count of visitors to several favorite exhibits one month. The results of the count are shown below. How many more people visited the pandas than visited the giraffes during this time? Okay, so let's underline our big question. And our big question reads, how many more people visited the pandas than visited the giraffes during this month? Okay. Now, remember, this is how we read a graph. The graph always has a label, and the label for this graph says one month visitor count. Then, I'm sorry, this is the title. The label says people in thousands. So on our number line over here to the left, 0,000. 12,000, 14,000, 16,000, 18,000, 20,000. In between, in the middle, 12 and 14 would be 13,000. So in between 12,000 and 14,000, 13,000 would be about there. Between 14,000 and 16,000, 15,000 would be there. Between 16,000 and 18,000, 17,000 would be about there. Between 18,000 and 20,000, in the middle would be 19,000. So keeping that in mind, that it says in thousands. So make sure that you underline thousands. And I'll pause right there. Now let's go back to our big question. We're only looking at the pandas. <coughs> Let's box in pandas and the giraffes. Because that's all we have to worry about. So let's go over here and let's circle pandas and the giraffes. <clears throat> okay, so I know my line for pandas go right here. Okay, my line for the giraffes goes right here. Okay, now let's solve our problem. The pandas. We're at 20, and remember it's in thousands, so we have to write it as 20,000. And I'll pause and let you catch up. The giraffe was the other end. The giraffe is in between 12,000 and 14,000. So then that would be 13,000. So the giraffe was 13,000. Okay, now let's go back over here. It says, how many more? Let's go box that in. How many more people visited the pandas and then visited the giraffes during the month? How many more means that I'm going to subtract. So we'll annotate by putting subtraction. So we're going to subtract. And I'll pause right there and let you finish it. Okay, so we know we start in the ones column. Zero minus zero gives us zero. I don't know why 
my pen doesn't always want to write. So let's try it again. Zero minus zero gives a zero. Zero minus zero gives a zero again. Zero minus zero gives a zero. So we should have three zeros. Okay. All right, so we know we can't subtract three from zero. So then we regroup the two. It will become a one. And we'll take the 10 and add it to the zero. And that's how we get 10. And then now we can subtract 10 minus three gives us seven. And we put our comma and our final answer should be 7,000. Go back over here. Notice that there's a seven as a. That's why it's very important that you read your labels. It says people in thousands. So if you would have subtracted 20 minus uh, 13, you would have gotten seven, but that's not what the graph represents. It represents the people in thousands. So it should be 20,000 minus 13,000, and the answer should be C, which is 7,000. I'll pause right there and let you catch up. If you need additional time, please pause your video. All right, the next problems are your you do's. And just remember that you read your titles and read your labels. Here it says number of students. So you just simply use the numbers that are here. And this is a very simple one because this is one through eight. Then down here, your other label is food and it gives you what each one is, and this here would be a bar graph. So make sure you answer the big question, okay? Then go over here, this will be a line plot. Your question is, how many students signed up for more than two events? Simple question. So remember the title, students and field day events. Here's your label number of events. So these numbers 0 through 10 represents the number of events. You're just simply looking for how many students signed up for more than two events. Make sure more than two events, okay? Remember each X, here's your key, stands for one student. So this is one student, one student. So that's two students that didn't sign up for anything and then so on and so forth. So each X stands for one student. So you can figure that out. This is a very simple one. Again, they're trying to see if you know how to read a line plot. And that's it. So you only have two problems to do. So you guys get them done. Put your answers in cahoots for me. Only do cahoots one time and make sure you're only doing the cahoots under your name. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you on Monday.